one. Can you see me? Are we live? Let's see, I'm waiting. I have myself going on the TV over there on YouTube. Let's see, how do I open the chat? This is my first time doing a YouTube live. Okay. Is it fine to have the recipe? Yes, you could have the recipe. Um, if you are going to have the recipe, I recommend that you use a hand mixer, not a stand mixer. I can go into detail about that later when I'm doing the, the meringue with you guys. So we are making my recipe with the Swiss method. Um, oh, it's rotated. I see what's going on. Uh, how do I fix that? I know I'm sideways. I really don't know how to fix that. Let's see. Oh no, not like that. Let me see, is that gonna be better? Technical, oh. All right, I can make it go um, sideways, so I guess we're gonna stream like this. Does that work? Okay, good, good. All right, so let's do it like this. Let's trim it like that. Um, so we are making macarons using the Swiss method, my recipe. I left a list on the description of the things you need if you're going to bake along with me. Um, if you are going to bake, bake along with me, I suggest doing a few things right now, which is preheat the oven. I already have my oven preheating. I'm using two different ovens today. I'm going to explain to you. I'm using my little countertop oven and I'm also using my, my big oven. I hope we have time to bake on the big oven. I'll explain all about it, just that I need my macarons to dry for me to bake in them. Oven, I don't know if we're gonna have time or not for the macarons to dry. It's very humid today. I've had the dehumidifier on all morning, but it's still kind of humid in here and hot. It's uh, about 50%, which is not extremely high, but it's good humidity. Okay, so preheat the oven if you're gonna bake along with me. Also bring a small pot, here, let me show you. A small pot of water with a little bit of water to a boil. You just want it to be at like a low simmer. So bring it to a boil and then reduce the heat. We'll be talking about the tools. We'll be talking about everything. I'm thinking it's gonna last about from one to two hours or something like that. I know you all have things to do. So I hope to make this quick. I just wanna show you guys in detail everything that I do. I think it can be really helpful. Um, so I've measured my ingredients. They're all measured. I have not sifted the almond flour and powdered sugar. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do that with you. Another thing that I like to do when I'm preparing for macarons is wipe down my materials and my tools with some vinegar. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. I already wiped my other my other trays that I'm using for baking. I'm gonna wipe this one. I'm gonna wipe my bowl, and I'm going to explain why. Let me see. Hi from Malaysia. Oh, it's midnight there. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I wonder how many people are baking along. Thank you so much for watching everybody. This is so nice to be baking with you guys live, showing my process. I'm only using Swiss meringue. It's my favorite. I've tried all different methods. The Swiss method is just my favorite. You find it, you know, after you're making macarons for a while and you try different recipes and different methods, you find the one that works best for you. For me, for me, Swiss is the first method that actually worked and gave me some really nice, beautiful shells. So that's what that's the one I use. Sorry, I didn't hear what temperature to preheat the oven. Okay, the temperature to preheat the oven. Now that's, um, that can be tricky. I used to use 325 on my old oven. On this new oven, the big oven, I can use like 300 to 310. Otherwise the macarons come out lopsided or they crack. The oven shoots up the temperature up and down. It can get a little bit crazy with this big oven because it's very unstable. So I'm using a lower temperature in order to minimize any issues that can happen as far as lopsided macarons or cracked macarons, which are issues 
that can happen due to heat problems in the oven. You know, the oven spiking the heat or just an even heat distribution. So I'm keeping the temperature a little bit lower. So on my big oven, I'm doing, it's not a confection oven, it's a, it's a regular oven. I'm doing 300. I set for 310, but I'll see what the thermometer sit, says. See, the thermometer right now is at 295. It does spike up and down like 10 degrees or so. So you kind of have to work with that and see what is best for your oven. My little oven, I have it at 290 right now. Um, the mini Ninja oven, I have it at 290 and it gets to like, to, I have to set it to 290 and it gets to about like 280, 285 with a thermometer. Um, so you always have to have a, an oven thermometer so you can actually see what the temperature inside the oven is. All right, let's get started. Let's wipe down the mats, did that. Let's wipe down the bowl with some vinegar. I just use white vinegar. And uh, that really helps get rid of the grease particles that might be in your tools, which can really harm your meringue. So let's see, wipe down my bowl and my trays. Now let's sift the powder sugar and the almond flour. I already have them measured out. I'm just going to sift them. This is the sifter I use. I do have a link for the sifter on the tools article on my blog. You can find it there. Um, maybe I can link it below later and fix the description. And so I'm gonna sift 105 grams of powdered sugar, 105 grams of almond flour. And uh, I like to use a whisk to kind of help to go through the sifter. This sifter is very fine. It has a, a, like two or three layers of mesh. So it really is a fine sifter. That's what you want to look for. You don't want to look for a sifter that has like the, heat, the huge mesh. And you might have to shop around because sometimes you might buy a sifter that says it's a fine mesh seed, but it's not. So you want to, you know, test out. So this one that I have, I have the link on my blog. And so when, when I get to this point that I see this on, on my sifter, I would just toss this. This is not even a tablespoon of, you know, almond particles, almond flour part particles and sugar that didn't go through. I'm not gonna push this through, but it's only about a tablespoon, maybe less. If you notice that your ingredients are leaving more than a tablespoon in the sifter, you want to find a different flour because your flour is just not fine enough for macarons. So in my experience, this is what I use, Blue Diamond Almond Flour. It's my favorite. I used to use Bob's Red Mill Flour, but now this is what I use, it's my favorite. And uh, let me turn this down. Okay, so now, get some water here. You can refine a little with the food processor. Okay, so here's, somebody said that you can refine the almond flour in the food processor. I personally don't like to do that. If I have a flour that I have to put it in the food processor, again, I try to get a different brand of flour because when you put the, the almond flour in the food processor, oftentimes it can release oils when you, when you grind it in the food processor and oils are not good for macarons. So it can cause those shells that look speckled on top, that look um, spotty, look like they're kind of oily. So that's my issue with processing the almond flour in the, in the food processor. I know some people do it, it works for them. You know, it's always worth it giving, it giving it a try. Anything you hear about macarons, always give it a try and see if it works for you. That's what I've done. I've always tried, I tried processing my flour. The best of a super fine almond flour, that's for sure. Yes, I agree with that. So I'm gonna put my almond flour here on the side and I'm gonna move us over here so we can do the, so we can start the syrup for the meringue. So let me get this over here. Hi there. So here we go. Bring you guys over here. 
All right. Okay, here we have my, which method is the best? The method that works for you is the best method. Um, some people prefer French, some people prefer Italian, whatever works for you. I, I'm doing the Swiss here. For French macarons, for vegan macarons, I use the French method. So it's different. But you can also use the Swiss and the Italian for vegan macarons, for humid climate. I'm in a humid climate right now. I use the Swiss, it works great for me. I used to be in a sort of dryish climate and also used the Swiss and it worked good. I'm just gonna get a different bowl. My bowl that I was gonna use for the egg whites just got a little bit hot because it was right next to the hot oven. And uh, I don't wanna use a hot bowl. If you put the egg whites in a hot bowl, it's just going to like cook them. Okay, so here I have my bowl. I'm gonna put my sugar, 100 grams of sugar that I already measured out earlier. I am using egg white powder. You don't have to use, hello, Lina. <laughs> so nice to see you here. We were just talking a bunch this morning. Please give me eggless macarons. I have eggless macarons on my blog and some videos on YouTube also, vegan macarons, pies and tacos. If you just type that, you'll find them, okay? <laughs> So, and now I'm gonna add the egg white powder. You don't have to use egg white powder, okay? Egg white powder is completely optional. It depends if it works for you or not. If you are in a humid climate, I do recommend you trying, giving it a try. Um, whenever it was a really dry weather up in New York where I was li living, um, when it was really dry, I couldn't use the egg white powder because it would make the macarons lopsided. It would make them so dry and so crunchy. It wasn't good. So during winter time when it was super dry, I did not use egg white powder. So if you are in a really dry climate, I don't think that the egg white powder is the best. But I do... Oh, hello, Danny. Oh, so, so nice to see you here. Um, yeah, but I do like to use it here on Florida for the humid climate. It's very, very beneficial. The egg white powder, it just, it's just adding more protein to your meringue. So it's like adding an extra layer of strength to the structure of the meringue, basically. That's why I like to use egg white powder. So here I'm gonna put the 100 grams of egg whites and I have the barely simmering water going over here and we're going to put the bowl, oops, there, on top. And now we're just going to melt the sugar. We're not looking to bring it to a certain temperature. Like when you make Swiss meringue buttercream, you have to bring the egg whites up to a certain temperature. But you don't have to do it with this. You just, you're just looking to melt the, the sugar. I saw somebody asking about cream of tartar. <clears throat> Excuse me. I was actually talking about cream of tartar today with Lena that's here. And um, cream of tartar really produces a really beautiful meringue. That's what I was using a little bit during winter time because I couldn't use the, I couldn't use the egg white powder. So I was using cream of tartar to help make my meringue more stable. So it will help make your meringue more stable if you use cream of tartar. Uh, about a quarter teaspoon and you just, you do this with the egg whites and with the sugar, and you add the cream of tartar in the mixer when you start to whip the meringue. So now we're just looking to melt the sugar. This can take maybe one minute, maybe, you know, three minutes. It depends on the temperature that you had your egg whites. And it depends on, on how high you have the heat, the, the water under. And uh, I do not use... I don't like purposely uh, let my egg whites come to room temperature before using. If they're cold of the oven, of the fridge, I just use them like that. Because since we're gonna um, hit up the egg whites with the sugar over the double boiler anyway, there's no need to really have the egg whites be at room temperature. The only thing that's gonna change is the time that you spend doing this. If the egg whites are cold, it might take, you know, five minutes to melt the sugar in the double boiler. So to test, when it starts getting like this, that you see it's very liquidy, 
then I just like kind of touch the egg whites. If I feel any sugar granules, I just do it a little bit longer. I don't feel any sugar granules here, so I guess we're safe to remove it from the heat. I'm just gonna wash my fingers here. And now we're gonna bring this, the egg white, the syrup that we just made to the mixer. So I'm gonna move you over there for the almond flour and the, the sifter, I think is what they meant. Yes, the almond flour is the blue diamond and the sifter, I have a link for it on my tools article on my blog. I can put it down below in the description after. So I'm gonna try to put you over here so you can see the meringue. Good? Okay. Now we're gonna transfer the syrup. I like to wipe down the bowl with a towel so we don't get any of the water that's on the bottom of the bowl going in your, in your mixer. You don't want that to happen, so just wipe it down. And we're gonna transfer the meringue, the syrup. We're gonna start whipping the meringue. Okay. I'm a very messy cook baker. <laughs> So I'm gonna start whipping on low, speed two. And I'm gonna do that for about 30 seconds or so, just to kind of get it going. And we're gonna slowly start to raise the speed of the mixer. So let's start here. The meringue takes me about maybe 10 minutes to whip. We'll, we'll see today, we'll time it. We'll see how long it takes to whip this meringue. So now we're gonna start raising the speed. I'm gonna put it on speed number four of my KitchenAid for about two minutes or so. Can you hear me okay with the noise? Yeah. Another thing is that somebody was asking about having the recipe, making half of the recipe. And yes, you can make half of the recipe. What I do recommend is that you don't use a stand mixer. If, if you're using a hand electric mixer, would you transfer the meringue to, to a new bowl? No, I wouldn't. I would just whip it on that bowl. And always I like to use a glass bowl. I should have said that when I was making the syrup. I like to use a glass bowl to, to melt the sugar and the egg whites. Oftentimes in a glass bowl that is thick, not like a super thin, you know glass bowl i feel like oftentimes i would use my stainless bowls they're so thin and they would just hit up so times cook the egg whites on the that were you know on the walls of the bowl so i like to use a glass bowl to do that and uh yes you can whip on the same bowl that you just made the meringue if you're just using a hand mixer so if you are making half of the recipe back to my back to my point if you're making half of the recipe use a hand mixer because the whisk won't be able to reach the bottom of the bowl at what point do you add a cream of tartar to the meringue i would add it as soon as i started on the first speed that's when i would add it if you're making it right now and you want to add it right now just go ahead and add it it'll be okay but it's right in the beginning when you first start to whip the meringue um let me see if i can open the chat if i can see some if you have any questions, I don't, I don't know how to open the chat. It's, I don't know. If the mixture is hot or lukewarm, it can be from, from just room temperature to lukewarm, not hot. So it can get lukewarm sometimes, but sometimes the sugar will melt before the mixture starts to even warm up for me. And I just take it out and start, start whipping. So here I have it on speed four. So why is it important to whip slower? If you are having issues with hollow macarons, for example, or if your meringue is not stable, you're having any issues with the structure of your macarons, whipping your meringue slower can be very beneficial because it's just gonna whip a stronger meringue. You're not gonna add too much air at once into, into the, the proteins and it's just gonna form if it forms slower, it's just gonna form a more stable meringue. And a stable meringue equals a sturdy 
and solid and beautiful shell with less likelihood of being hollow. So when would you add vanilla? I don't add vanilla. Normally, if I would add any vanilla or any flavoring, I would do it towards the end when the meringue is already um, almost whipped or whipped if I was gonna do it. Do you need to warm the mixture to a certain temperature? No, just enough to melt the sugar, yes. It's not like when you make Swiss meringue buttercream that you gotta bring it up to like 140. That's what I do. I made macarons and they refused to dry after. I let it sit for 45 minutes to an hour. The batter was thick. Sometimes, before I had a dehydrator, I had to leave my macarons drying one time for like two or three hours. Are you making a specific flavor today? No, I'm not making any flavors. I just kind of wanted to focus on the shell itself. I am making, I got this color because it's beautiful, regal purple, that's what I'm gonna use. It's so pretty and it, it's kind of like Halloween-ish because it's coming next month and so I'm using the sprinkles too to decorate. I, ho I hope we have time to decorate the macarons. Would you recommend the oven dry technique? Yes, it works for a lot of people. Um, I don't do the oven drying technique. I have to explore it better, but sugar bean, here on YouTube, she uses it and she teaches it. Go check her out, she talks all about it. She teaches how she does the oven drying. I think it's like 230 uh, Fahrenheit. She leaves the shells there for a couple minutes. I'm not really sure, you have to take a look at her videos. Do you have experience with what side of my phones when using Swiss method? Um, will this be recorded because I have to leave for a meeting? Yes, it, it will be recorded. It will, I'll post later. The other question was, do you have experience with lopsided macarons when using Swiss method? Yes. I did have lopsided macarons, like when I told you, when I was um, using egg white powder and it was too dry, my, my macarons were coming out lopsided. Um, also, it depends on your oven. I've had it before, issues with lopsided macarons where it was the oven's fault or when I try to bake it with the air bake tray without resting, it also gave me lopsided macarons. How much time to beat the mixture? It's gonna take about 10 minutes or so. I kind of forgot to put it on speed six. So let's put it on speed six now, which is totally fine. You can, you can whip it all the way on speed four. It's just gonna take a long time. So now I raised it to speed six. And it's still not, I'm sure you here. It's still pretty, pretty liquidy. So we gotta wipe this a little bit longer. We whip this a little bit longer, what? Uh, what brand colors are you using for macarons? I'm using Regal Purple. Oh, the flavor. Yeah, so I just, I have like a regular vanilla buttercream ready to go. So maybe we can have time to fill the shells. So let's just focus on the on the shells today and we can do the we can do flavors on another day um for how long do you dry your vegan macarons i haven't made vegan macarons here yet but back in new york when i was doing vegan macarons it's the climate is so different than here so but i had to let them rest for a long time about over an hour. So sometimes, especially if you put food coloring in it, they'll also change the drying time, which is better, convection or convention baked in the front. Um, a lot of people like convection because it's just more, it distributes the temperature more, it's supposed to distribute the temperature more evenly in the oven. Um, I don't have convection. Actually, the little oven, the small Ninja is convection, but it's such a small oven that we can't really compare to like a large convection oven. For how long should we continue to whip in speed six? For another few minutes until it is done. So we'll see. Right now, it's still, it's getting glossy. So the meringue is getting glossy, but it's just not there yet. It's still too soft, I think. I don't remember what time we started whipping the meringue, but I think it's been about, I don't know, eight minutes maybe, seven minutes. Still pad or, still pad or tef Teflon. I am going to use mats. You can use Teflon sheets. It works for a lot of people. 
let's just not forget about the meringue, right? Um, Teflon sheets work for a lot of people. I can grab it here real quick and show you. Uh, my Teflon sheets. So this is a mat I really like too. It's a Prince. Yes, it's been eight minutes. Thank you, Lena, you're timing it. <laughs> and this is the Teflon sheet. I don't really use it. Is everything? Okay, so almost nine minutes already. So I guess it's going to take a little bit longer than 10 minutes. Probably also because I had it on speed four for so long. And a couple of people asked me to give some pointers on vegan macarons as I'm, as I'm doing this. If you are making vegan meringue with aquafaba, with my recipe, it takes a long time to whip the meringue. A long, long time. I remember one time taking me like 30 minutes to whip the meringue. So don't be discouraged or don't feel like you're doing something wrong. Just whip until you get to the consistency. Unless it's been like, I don't know, like an hour, 45 minutes and the meringue still hasn't gotten to the consistency yet, then maybe you let some water fall on the meringue or something happened there. But it shouldn't take more than, I think the longest time it took for me was 30 minutes with the aquafaba. Do the egg whites need to be fresh to make meringue? Um, I think that fresh egg whites are better for meringue in general. So I try to make it with my freshest eggs. Um, but some people, for example, some people let their egg whites dry. They crack the eggs and they let the eggs, egg whites dry for days. So it really, it depends on your preference. It really does. So if you have, if you're curious about it, then try both ways, you know, try fresh eggs and try, you know, drying the egg, egg whites and see what you think gives you the best results. So let's take a look at the meringue. Let me show you here. This meringue is not ready yet. It's not ready yet, but I'm just gonna show you why it's not ready. See, it's way too soft. Have you ever made macarons in gas oven? I have not made it in gas oven. Sorry. So this is, the peaks are way too long. This is definitely not ready. It, it is glossy and it is getting there. So let's continue to whip a little bit longer. Back to speed six. I'm curious how many people are actually making macarons right now with me. Can I use carton egg white instead of fresh one? Yes, I have videos about it too. I, I did experiment with that last year. Yes, you definitely can. I found that the best for me was to use 50-50 because the carton egg whites can be a little bit trickier to get right. They also take a long time. Big to yours. Hi, Nicole. Thank you, Nicole. Nicole, I have so much to thank you. You're just an inspiration to me. I'm just like so inspired. So inspired by you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Your tips, Nicole, just give me egg white powder. I started using egg white powder actually because of Nicole. Just all my macaron tips, I get them from Nicole. <laughs> so if you need any macaron tips, go to Bake Toujours. <laughs> So here we go. Still too soft. We're gonna keep whipping. But I do like to keep checking at this point. I don't like to just let it go for too long without checking. Parece suspiro. Pois a mesma suspiro is like meringue cookies. We said that it looks like meringue cookies, yeah. So I started at the same time as you, but the meringue is right at stiff peaks. See, it's so different. Like, the your egg whites can make a difference. Your weather can make a difference in how long you whip the meringue. That's why you should never go by time, by how long somebody else takes. You know, you should go by how long it takes you to get there. So if you are already at six peaks, then I'm almost there. Where are you originally from? I'm from Brazil. Let's take a look at this meringue. Oh, it's still not good enough. Let's keep going a little bit longer. And I do this literally, I stop every like 30 seconds or so and I keep checking because I don't want to let it go too much. It's better to over check than to under check and let your meringue over with. 
that's also another reason why a lot of um, a lot of times you have hollows is because you're over whipping the meringue. Let's check, but we're almost there, so that's why I got I I like to keep checking. And then let's see. That's good. That's good. Don't you think? So let's look at this. You see on the bottom, I don't know, can you see the defined waves on the bottom? Those beautiful soft waves. The meringue is not chunky, it's not separating. It has a nice peak at the top. I like to swirl the, the whisk in the meringue and then pull the peak up. It's shooting straight up. It has a nice, nice waves on the bottom. Does yours look like that, guys? So, do you sell your macarons? I don't sell them. I don't sell my macarons, guys. I usually, I try to give them to people, um, you know, to my friends, my neighbors. I brought them to the hospital the other day, to the nurses. I made a big box of like 127 macarons and something. I don't even remember how many mini ones, and I brought them to the nurses at the hospital. So I don't sell them. Okay, now we have our meringue. I put my mixer away. We're gonna do the macaronage. Let me get my color. I'm using the Regal Purple. This is when I like to add my food coloring. Some people like to add the food coloring at the end of whipping the meringue, but I like to add it when I'm doing the macaronage. So again, you see what works best for you and you do that. So I'm gonna put a little bit of the purple. I'm not gonna do too much. I don't wanna add too much moisture to the macarons. I want them to dry fast so I can have a chance to show you the macarons that are, be that are gonna be baked in the, in the oven. Look, Lena reached the stage in six minutes. Lena, yeah, see, it's so different. Maybe it's your weather or something like that. We were just, Lena and I were just talking today about that because she told me that she whips the meringue for six minutes and I'm like, I whip way longer than that, like over like double that time. So I'm gonna do the macaronage. Can you please leave the video for catching out purposes? For sure. Show the stuff here, shows home to follow with you. Yes, yes, that would be nice. So I'm just, right now, what I'm doing is I'm just going around the bowl under to try to incorporate the almond flour and the powdered sugar. I'll take the longer whip in the floor than I need to, right? Yes, I actually, I really like the humid climate for macarons. A lot of people complain about it, but I think it makes just beautiful macarons. Um, their texture is just so soft and chewy. It's really good. Like sometimes up in New York, when it was winter time, the heat is on all day long and the macarons, um, they can get, you know, dry, I feel like. What does humid really mean? Like, here right now outside is probably i don't know 80 percent humidity in here is 50 percent humidity that's a little bit higher than what i was used to uh, during winter we were in the like 20s i believe um okay so here we go i see the colors are incorporated the dry ingredients are incorporated so now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna kind of push the batter up against the walls and go around and just kind of keep pushing the batter up against the walls to release those air bubbles and uh, to get the, the macaronage at the right consistency. And again, there's no, I can't tell you like, do the macaronage for five minutes or for six minutes. I can't tell you that. You have to do it until it's done. Maybe you're doing faster than I am. Maybe because I'm talking to you while I'm doing this, I'm doing it slower. Um, so it depends. It, if your meringue was stiffer, it might take longer, or it might feel like you're not getting there sooner because the meringue is on the stiff side. It all depends with macarons, you know? That's why the more you practice and the more you do this and you watch other people doing it, the more you know for yourself and you know what works best for you, you know? I feel like everybody that makes macarons, makes a recipe from somebody, has to alter something. You have to because you're not using 
the same brands of ingredients or not in the same climate, the same oven. Do you really need to press around the bowl? Uh, I don't know, that's what I do. I don't know if I need to or not. That's what I like to do too. I feel you can actually hear like the air bubbles, the air bubbles um, coming out. Yeah, it is a nice color. It kind of looks like pink, right? I didn't add too much of the food coloring. So it does kind of look like pink. It's regal purple. It's one of my favorites. I love all the purples from AmeriColor. Electric purple, it's beautiful. They have a couple other purple tones, purple shades that are so beautiful. So we're almost there. I don't feel like we're there yet. Let me show you what I'm looking for. So you see that the meringue is falling off the spatula and it kind of keeps flowing. However, can you see on the bottom of the bowl, it takes way too long to incorporate back with the ingredients that are already in the bowl. So that's one thing that I'm looking for. How fast is it incorporating back with the ingredients that are already in the bowl? Actually, this is, this is doing okay. Then I do the figure eight. So I grab some better. <laughs> I know how to show. And I try to do several figure eights with the better that's flowing off the spatula. And if it doesn't break, it just keeps going. Let's do a nice figure eight here. I hope you can see there. Can you see? It's just going eight, eight, eight. And then even after the better, after the better breaks up, it still continues to fall into the bowl slowly and effortlessly. And the batter that's falling back in the bowl is starts to incorporate nicely with the batter that's already in the bowl after about maybe five seconds. I feel like this needs a couple more stirs. What do you think? I think this is good. I think this is good. Okay, here I have my little Piping bag fitted with a number 12 Wilton tip. And a coupler. I like to put my piping bag in a cup like this. Let's transfer the batter to the piping bag. Also really like this ties to tie the bag so this way you don't run the risk of the better drying or falling off the top as you're trying to pipe and we're gonna start to pipe first I'm gonna pipe just a few ones in this tray I'll be talking about my tray soon also with you guys First, I'll be piping just a few ones in this tray over here. This is my rimless baking sheet. It's not air bake. It's just a rimless baking sheet. And I'm just gonna pipe on this. This is for the big oven, because I wanna try to see if we'll have a chance to um, have this dry for us to bake them. So let's just pipe this ones and let them dry. Position the piping bag in the center of the template. Apply pressure. And at the top, you do a little twist. Can you see it nicely? I can move the camera on the next tray. So I'll put it directly on the, on the macarons. Now we're going to tap the bottom, tap the bottom of the 
filtrate through this in the air bubbles. You can see some air bubbles pop in there. Oh, my husband's here. He came to say hello. What's the best size for the macaron? How much smaller are you piping out? It depends on what size you want. Like, I feel like all of my, all of my trays have like a different size. So if you're doing this to sell, you might want to get like, um, like one size mat that's the same. So you don't have different sizes. I don't really care. I don't really pay too much attention about that. Probably cause I don't sell them. Um, I think this are like, I piped all the way to the center of the middle or to the edges of the middle, the middle circle. I'll show you better on the next one that I pipe. I can't reach her. So now I'm gonna use this little cake um, scribe thing to, cookie scribe to pop any air bubbles that might be on the surface of the shells. I feel like I'm not gonna have a lot of air bubbles today because we did whip the meringue super slow. If you whip them, or I feel like when I whip the meringue faster, if I'm like in a hurry or something, I feel like I have a lot of air bubbles. And it makes sense, you know, makes sense that that would happen because you're just, it's, putting a lot of air, a lot of air into the, into the meringue if you're whipping fast. A lot of air, like just really fast. So just pipe a couple of these, uh, poke a couple of those air bubbles out. Okay, now we're gonna let this dry. I'm gonna put this over there on the side so we can have this dry. Give me a second here. My little tray, my little rack. Oh. Put those over here. Can you use cornstarch instead instead of egg white powder for humid weather? You can try, you can try um cornstarch. Hello to Mr. Pies and Tacos. <laughs> How many macarons have you done in your lifetime? I don't even know. I failed so many times. I really did fail a lot of times, guys. Let me see. Do you really need to press? Oh, I already saw that question. Oh, what's the best size? How much smaller are you piping? Here, I'll show you. I'm gonna pipe again. Is the thickness of the batter same for the different methods? Uh, I think Italian is softer. Italian, I feel like it's softer, softer, better. I feel like the French and Swiss are kind of similar. I just feel like the meringue of the Swiss method is a little bit more elastic than the meringue of the French method. It's just a little bit more elastic. I don't, I don't know how to explain. It just has a, a more elastic, like just a more elastic consistency. Let's pipe this one. I'm gonna use, oftentimes I pipe on the trays that I'm not going to use to bake. I'm gonna transfer this to the small tray before, to the small tray before I bake. It's just easier for me to pipe on this big tray, tap the trays and everything like that. I'm gonna try to put it close to the macaron so you guys can see it really well. Is that good? Sorry to keep moving you guys. All right, can you see it good? All right, let's do this. Let's pipe. So in the center, I'm gonna pipe all the way to the edge of the small. I'm gonna pull the top. One, two, three, four. You can count too. One, two, three, to see if they are similar oh, it was a bit wonky you saw it clearly now good so yeah I am piping it to the almost to the edges of the center circle but some mats are different so for example my silk pads, they only have one circle. They don't have the middle circle. And then some other mats, the middle circle is smaller. I like to use those if I'm piping like smaller macarons 
or something like that. <clears throat> so here. Silicon Teflon or parchment? What is best for macarons? Silicon Teflon or parchment? I like silicon personally. I feel like parchment uh, makes the macarons wrinkled on the bottom, which is why I don't like parchment paper. Uh, but a lot of people say that parchment paper makes the shells fuller. I think Nicole did a Go watch Nicole Big Tujur's video. She did a video where she baked on parchment, on teflon, and on um, silicon, and she compares the results. So if you go watch her video, that can be very helpful. So we're just gonna poke the air bubbles. This ones we're going to bake in the little oven and we're not going to let them rest. So let me tell you again, the big oven, I have to rest the macarons when I bake it in the big oven. In the small oven, I don't have to rest them. It is better if I do rest them. They do come out looking better if I rest them before. But we're not going to rest it for the sake of the video. And I, I, haven't, I haven't been resting them on that oven. Sometimes they just end up resting because I piped them. And they're just waiting for the other tray to bake. Because I do bake one tray at a time in each oven. Um, I like to poke the air bubbles. It's just like so relaxing. <laughs> you just sit there and just poke them. Okay, let's transfer this tray, this mat to the small tray. Let me get it. Mm, okay, this is the tray I'll be using. It's right here. It's an aluminum tray. I'm going to use it upside down. So I'm just gonna transfer it here. I bake it upside down. Why do I bake it upside down? To allow for the heat to circulate more evenly throughout the shells. That can help if you're having cr um, cracked macarons or lopsided macarons, especially if you notice that the macarons some macarons are cracked and some are not. That is, you know, if some macarons are cracked, some are not, some are lopsided, some are not, that could very likely be a heat distribution issue. So it's good to look into that. A few things you can do. One of them is to bake it with the, with the tray flipped upside down. What do you do if you overmix the batter? How do you fix an overmix batter? You can't, oh, you can't fix the overmix batter, guys. But you can try to bake it either way, you know? Why, why not? So let's see. I'm gonna put this over here in the little oven. Let me put the light on. Let's put the time, let's check in six minutes. I don't, I don't always rotate the macarons in this, oh. I stopped. Okay. I don't, I don't usually rotate the macarons. This is a Ninja uh, Foodie one, 10 and 1. I also have a link for it on the Macaron Tools post on, on my blog. I don't usually rotate the shells on this little oven unless they're starting to get lopsided. If they are starting to get lopsided, then I do rotate. And by rotate, I mean flip it around, you know, 180 degrees. Rotate the tray. That's what I mean by that. Um, so in the meantime, we still have more macarons to pipe. This was the first time I've been able to see the macaronage process. Oh, thank you. I'm so happy. It's a adorable oven. Yes, it is adorable. How long do you rest them until they are dry? It depends. It depends on the weather, on how much food coloring you added, on the consistency of your meringue that day. So we'll see, we'll have ours drying over here. Let's, I'm gonna take a look at how they are. Yeah, they're not even close, of course, because I just put them there. But I do, I do hope that I have time to show you about about 
the those macarons i do hope that they dry by the time those are done baking and we're done filling so you can at least take a look also this is a i'm using an aluminum pen this is another thing i wanted to say i'm using aluminum pen for all my pens i'm using aluminum this ones i don't bake on this ones anymore if they're like this if i do bake it bake on them i flip it upside down again because of what i explained with the heat um this i bought this to try out because it's for my little oven i could not find an aluminum rimless baking sheet for my little oven so i got this one which is steel and i've tried on both ovens baking with this it just doesn't work it just, it's just cracking my macros so steel is not the best for me to bake i know barb from barb from sweet mac shop she uses steel trays it works for them you can see her macarons are beautiful then again she has different ovens she's in a different climate she uses a different method a different recipe so always if i say like i don't like steel pens don't ever like not buy them but if you are having an issue with your macarons cracking or with heat or anything like that lopsided macarons then maybe look into that aluminum game changer yes it is for me i just i can't i've tried other steel pans um wilton sent me a pen one time it was beautiful it was steel pen did not work for my macarons i tried um so we can pipe some more macarons let me see if you have more questions let me read the chat how long am i gonna bake in the countertop oven um until it's done i'm still learning this countertop oven a little bit I think it takes me about 20 minutes to bake in there. It might take a little bit longer. Um, it's also not great at keeping the temperature super steady. So it might be a little bit longer, but probably 20 minutes. It's not dry macarons also right? Can also, not dry macarons can also rise. Yeah, they do, they bake. Um, I'll show you in a minute. They're still, they still look the same, but I will show you what they look like. What is the best rack for baking, bottom or middle? I bake on the middle. On this one, it's on the bottom. On the countertop, it's on the bottom. On the on my big oven, it's in the middle, on the middle of the... Does double pen help with lopsided? Yes, it does, it can. It can help with lopsided. It depends though, if your issue is a heat distribution it's worth trying when i tried the double pen thing it was not good for me because it made my the bottom of my macarons not bake through it was very hard to get them to bake and i started having hollow macarons because they weren't baking all the way through what's the internal temperature of the small oven i don't have a thermometer in there right now because i i can't have a thermometer in there and the tray um but earlier i measured and also this week when i made macarons it's set to 290, but it goes down to like, it's like 280, 285. So that's the temperature that I'm doing on the small oven. That's a convection oven. So it also, when you're using a convection oven, you need a less, you need less, less heat. So you need your heat to be lower than if you're using just a regular. It takes a few hours to dry. See somebody? Bessie from the UK, she said that it takes a few hours to dry. So that's the thing, you know, it can take a few hours. In the beginning, when I didn't have the dehumidifier, and today might take longer, I turned the dehumidifier off before I started the video because it's so loud. It makes a really loud noise. So I didn't, didn't want it to interfere with the video. So I turned it off, but I would have the dehumidifier on right now for my humidity if I wasn't recording the live thank you so much i just want to say thank you because your recipe is the only that, that works for me thank you so much thank you i have to try making macarons again yes okay so that's the end of our six minutes let's check it's forming some feet i don't see it being lopsided so i'm not going to to rotate it I'm just going to put it to bake longer. We're gonna bake. Oh, never mind. This is in hours, it's not in minutes. 
let's put another six minutes okay let's put another six minutes that's gonna put us to a total of 12 minutes but it's not gonna be ready yet I, I already know it but I'm just saying in six minutes we'll check to see if we need to rotate it or not so it should take about 20 minutes in the meantime if you guys have any questions you can totally ask me how much food color should you add you can add as much as you want sometimes I add a lot of food coloring if I'm making like a really vibrant color or black or red or something like that I can use up to like even almost a whole bottle of the of the the food color the small one so it depends on what kind of color you want to add for this one I only added like a drop because I didn't want the macarons to have too much added humidity for them to take too long to dry how do you know when they're baked through I would definitely show you about that um I will show you when the macarons are baked. When you try to move a shell, it doesn't move. It doesn't feel jiggly, you know, when you try to like kind of wiggle a shell. If I use the tally method, our measurements always completely different industries. Yes, especially you've got to add water to it. So I have no idea if you would be able to make this recipe with the Italian. I did make this recipe with the French method a couple times and it did not work. Um, I mean, it worked, but the feet were so tiny. The chocolate ones did not work, but the regular, I did my recipe with the same measurements, but the, with the French method and it did not work. It was not good. The, the feet were like so tiny. Um, can't wait for the book. Thank you so much. I can't wait for the book. It's just, it's gonna be awesome. Um, have you used freeze-dried fruit powder for the shelves? Yes, yes. Camilla, is this your first YouTube live? Yes, can you tell? <laughs> but I wanna do more. I wanted to do horizontal, I don't know what happened. Maybe on the next one I can figure that out. Um, can you add gel and powder together? Um, yes, I do that a lot of times, especially if I'm doing black. If I'm doing the black color, I put the powder with the meringue when I'm with, almost done whipping. And then I also add a lot of gel food coloring. It's just that the powder helps to establish that, you know, foundation. White gel coloring. I don't use the white gel food coloring. I use the, um, I use the white powder. The white gel food coloring doesn't do anything for me. Um, you know, Barb from Sway Mac Shop, she uses one that's called Fog from Americolor. So you could try that. She just adds like a little drop and it offsets the yellow in the macarons. It's kind of like, it has like a blue color. Uh, or causes an even shape and cracking. It really depends. I, I really have to look at it to be able to, you know, if they have an uneven shape, it could be because they're overmixed or because you're using, or because the meringue was under whipped. Baking time, please. I don't know. We'll see. It's going to bake until it's done baking. I don't have like a, it, it could be 15 to 20 minutes. It could be a little bit more. It depends on so many things. I have fog. Thank you so much. Yes, that's what, what brand of food coloring. That is a Mary color. I have the, I have the, the fog here somewhere. Oh, oh, what was that question? Do you ever flavor your shells with odd flavors? What would be odd flavors? I don't know. I, I flavor my shells, you know, freeze dried powder. Daniel was asking about the freeze dried powder. I do use freeze dried powder. Um, so it's strawberry freeze dried powder. It's really good. I like it. Fog. Here's the fog. Here you go. Fog. Oops. It looks like this. And it's like a blue. So it offsets the, the yellow in the shells to not make them yellow, to make them, you know, white. But I feel like it doesn't work. I feel like what really works is the, the powder. 
I have convection oven. When I set the temperature to 300, the oven shows 280. Do I need to raise the temperature or the air circulation can compensate the temp difference? So that's up to you to, to um, study your oven and find out what temperature is best. All ovens are gonna be off. I feel like no ovens are um, telling the temperature, are set to the, are set to the temp exact temperature that you set it to. It's always off, so just try it. So if, you're, if your thermometer is showing 280, you're actually baking them at 280. Um, and the convection oven does require a lower temperature to bake the macarons. So try with 280, try raising a little bit and see what happens. Can you show the oven thermometer you use? Yes, I have some over here on the side. I think I have a brand new one here. This is the Rubbermaid one. The Rubbermaid is really good. It lasts a long time. I got the Walmart brand and it was not good. It broke. Oh, okay. The timer's done again. Let's take a look at the macaron, see if we gotta if we gotta rotate them or not. So I don't think we have to rotate them. Um because they're not lopsided. You can see that they're even. So I don't have to, I'm not gonna open the oven. I try to avoid opening the oven and rotating them unless I really need to. Um, but sometimes in this oven, it starts to get lopsided and that's when I, I rotate. I open the oven and rotate. The problem is when you open the oven, you lose a lot of temperature and that just creates you know, unstable temperature in your oven. So I'm gonna put it for another six minutes and see where they are. They are, they're definitely not done yet. So we gotta continue to bake them. Let me see if I had other questions. They had an ash color too that you can use if you don't have fog, works similar. Ooh, ash. So Nicole said they have an ash color on a, on a merry color that you can also use for white. No, this is what I, this is what I like. I like the, the white powder by Master Lee. Where are you from? I'm from Brazil. I've been here in America for uh, 10 years, 10 years, a little bit over 10 years. And uh, this is my oven thermometer, the rubber made. It's really good. Why no? Re why do no rest macarons sometimes not work? It depends. It really depends. So in my big oven, it doesn't work, the no rest. I think it's because of the oven. The oven is the culprit in that situation. It might be because you added too much food coloring. If I add too much food coloring, even if I'm baking on that little oven, I'm still gonna rest them because if you add too much food coloring, they tend to crack. Um, so regardless of the oven I'm using and the pen that I'm using, if I'm doing a macaron that has a lot of color, I let them rest. So it could be a lot of different things. Let me see if there's more colors, more questions. Thank you. Do you oven dry them? No, but uh, the sugar bean has um, oven drying technique. You can take a look on her, on her channel. And let me show you the, so this is the pen that I used to bake on my, on my large oven. <clears throat> topic, your voice is so soothing. Thank you, Nicole. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, so this is the pen that I use. It's not air bake. I'll show you the air bake tray. This is the air bake tray. It has like an insulated bottom. I learned from the I learned about the air bake tray from Tayana from Whisk Tax and from the call from Big Toujours, they use this pen to do no rest. The problem is that it doesn't work for this oven over here. It was working for my oven when I was in New York, but for this one, it's just not working. Um, Cause this oven is just so, I had to do so many things for this oven. Like I put a pizza stone on the bottom of the oven to try to get the temperature to regulate, to not, fluctuates so much. I'm gonna pack the rest of this better that I have here. 
My macarons are resting right now. I hope they come out good. Thanks so much for teaching us your technique. Thank you so much for following along with me. Like, seriously, it means so much to me that you guys are here watching and baking with me. It's been already over an hour. <laughs> come on, macarons. Let's continue to pipe this. If you guys have more questions, you can ask. Uh, I put the oven cover over the bottom, totally even out the temperature. Yes, exactly. So I put the pizza stones on the bottom of the oven. And what they do is that you got to preheat the oven for a long time. But the, the pizza stone will also preheat and it's just going to retain a lot of heat. So when you either when you open the door or either if the oven is just naturally fluctuate, fluctuating the temperature up and down, the pizza the pizza stone is kind of gonna act like a radiator and it's gonna like radiate heat to try to help it that's gonna help keep it more more stable the temperature in there can you do oreo macarons for your next macaron video <laughs> i do have a oreo macaron recipe but it's not like me baking live it's just amita thank you so much oh you are so sweet thank you have you ever tried baking macarons with sprinkles on them? Yes, we can put some sprinkles on the macarons. Is it okay to leave the batter in the piping bag for a while? Yes. For how long? A long time. Like sometimes if I'm doing shapes, it can take me three hours to pipe those shapes and the batter just stays in the bag for a long time and they, they're fine. Um, one time I think I went to test, I was making my watermelon macarons and I had some leftover of the red batter of the center and I left it there and like we went to do a bunch of stuff six hours later I still had a little bit of batter there so I baked it and they were like fantastic so yeah you can you need a new double oven I agree with you Jerry <laughs> about the heating elements I have three settings for the same heating element with a fan at the back or top What's the best in your opinion? I don't know. I really don't know. I, I think it's best if you just experiment with all of those settings, write down what, what the results are and, uh, and just keep experimenting with the different settings. It's important to write down the results though. The macarons are done. Let's take a look. I mean, I don't know if they're done baking, but the oven's done. Let's see. So, see, this is what I do. You see this? They're moving. They're not done. Not done baking. So I'm gonna put for a little bit longer. Because the macarons, they feel... Please show us how you know when it's completely baked through. Yes, I will. Because the macarons are feeling way too soft still. So I know they're not done yet. So let's, uh, what time is it? 12. Still fine. Please show that again. Yes, I definitely will show again. I don't want to open it right now to not lose more temperature, but I will show you again in another couple minutes when we test it again, okay? So let's pipe some more macarons. Do you place anything over your pastels to make sure they don't brown at all? Yes, I do. I do sometimes. I put oven, uh, oven. I put foil on top of them, um, definitely. So in the last five minutes baking, you don't want to put it any time less than that because it's just going to like make your shell sink, it's not good. I made that mistake before. I think when I was making my bunny macarons, I just piped all these bunnies and they were white, so I wanted them to stay white. So I was very desperate to go in there and put the foil on top of them. And, uh, and they just made, I thought they were already set, but they just, they just made the macarons sink. For how long should you preheat the oven before putting the macarons in? I preheat it for a long time. So I preheated the big oven for like over an hour. Well, it's been preheating, it's still preheating. So it's preheating for a long time. That also helps to minimize the oven fluctuation, the temperature. So let's pipe this macarons up before. Let me just fix one thing with the oven over here. Now let's pipe this. Let's pipe this shells. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask them. 
if we don't have time, if those macarons are taking too long to cool down, maybe we can, I have some other macarons that I made over there. We can fill them and decorate them, decorate the other ones. just gonna pipe this is probably gonna have to rest for a while so you will see this macarons baked I'll put I'll post about them on my stories later maybe and yeah if you did make macarons today with me and if you want to message me later showing me your macarons if you had any issues um, just message me later anytime I get lots of messages um, you know asking about macarons it's really helpful if you come to ask me a question if you do have pictures of your batter and of the meringue and just for you in general it's good to have the those pictures because you can actually see and try to pinpoint if something goes wrong you can actually go back to the pictures or the videos that you have and try to see um, what went wrong so i really recommend taking pictures even if or can send pictures to you. You can send it on uh, Instagram DMs. Or if you don't have Instagram, you can send it on my email, Camilla at paisantacos.com. So it's really helpful because some, sometimes if you say I've had cracked macarons, it could be like so many things, you know, and it could be so many different reasons why they cracked. But if I can see your meringue and if I can see the batter, it will be much easier for me to try to help. And I do have a troubleshooting guide also on my blog that you can try to consult. It has, you know, the issues that you might encounter and why they could have happened. Oftentimes, you know, it could be, it could even be a mixture of things that are going wrong but what i recommend is to tackle one thing at a time um so every time you make the macarons make notes take pictures and and uh so you can go back to those notes later that's really the best way to learn and uh yeah so somebody was asking about sprinkles right so if you do want to put sprinkles if you do want to bake the macarons with sprinkles, um, now would be the time to put the sprinkles on after you pipe them and then you tap the trays, pop in the air bubbles, and that would be a good time to put the sprinkles before the macarons have a chance to dry. Those are almost, almost there. Let me see, I'm getting sprinkles. Then we can use... You know, you can never go wrong with this type of sprinkles. The non pareos I don't know how to say that. This ones, you can never go wrong with this because they don't melt. They're not heavy. If you use sprinkles that are heavy or they're chocolate based, they will sink or melt while well, this color. <laughs> it looks like a mermaid color now. Oh, the oven's gonna go off too. I'll take a look at the oven here. Move you. Okay. Let's see. Let's test it. What's actually looking, waiting for the macarons to dry? I'll show you that in one second. Let me see. So here we go. Can you see it? Can you see me moving? See, I'm trying to move it. They're not moving now. And I'm touching the top and they feel pretty sturdy. So I think we can remove this from the oven. Let me just get my little gloves so I don't get burnt. So, here we go. This is what the problem is with baking the tray upside down. It's kind of hard to remove it. So, here. Can you see it? They don't move 
Oh, this one's a little bit jiggly. I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it a little bit longer. That one in the back was a little bit jiggly. Let's just do, let's just do three minutes. Did anybody count how long it's been baking? I, don't, I have no idea, I'm just putting the timer. Now the, macro, the macarons that are drying. So you can see they're tacky, you know, tacky. They're losing the gloss, the, the shine. You touch them, it doesn't stick to your finger. 21 minutes so far. Thank you, Sophia. Thank you so much. Thank you, Amrita. 21 minutes. Thank you so much. <laughs> so you touch them. It doesn't stick to your finger. These are a little bit soft. I will leave them a little bit longer, maybe another 10 minutes, because when you touch them, you can actually feel that they're still a little bit, um, a little bit wet. They are dry on the top, but when you touch them, you can feel that they're kind of soft. You see that it left, my finger left an imprint. That means it's still a little bit soft. Let's just leave another five minutes, five to 10 minutes. We'll do it when that one, when that other batch is done baking. So here we have this one. I'm going to, so this is what you do with the sprinkles. Just put the sprinkles on top. Again, look for sprinkles that are not chocolate based or sprinkles that are um, too heavy, you know, like those huge like balls and the huge sprinkles, they're just gonna, even the confetti was like this kind. See this kind, that would make a macaron sink too. Can you please share the dehumidifier you use? Yes, I can put a link for that. I don't have a link for that one on my, on my post, but I can definitely do it. Let me see if I can see the, here it is. I can show it to you. This is my dehumidifier. It's moving too much. That's it. I can put a link there for you. It's off right now, obviously, but that is my dehumidifier. And we got our shells have 45 seconds. We're gonna stay right here because I think they are, they're gonna be ready. On silicone pads, some mats are separated from the pad partially during baking time. Could it be because of overusing silk pad? Well, it could be actually, yes, it could be. Um, I think that, I think that, um, I ch so I change my mats like about once a year, I would say. I, I always have new mats, but I stop using them after about like maybe a year or two to you don't want to keep using a mat that you know because at a certain point they're going to start retaining grease and slime that you won't be able to get rid of so it's good to to switch them get new mats every now and then um, and you can always always soak them in vinegar and soak them in vinegar soap there we go okay let's take them out They're baked. This is just, hold on, I'm gonna get an, another towel for me to pull them out. Here we go, on the other side. I'm out of here. There we go. Macarons. A nice little feet. It's good to wait for them to cool down before you try to peel the macarons off, off the mat. And another thing, so if you only have one pan, what temperature do you preheat the oven? This one was 290, but the temperature inside is about like 285. I can put a thermometer in there so you can see what the temperature actually is in there. Because I can't, with this little one, I can't have a thermometer in there and also bake at the same time, bake the tray, have the tray and the thermometer in there at the same time. So we'll just see what the temperature is in there. Um, I forgot I was answering a question that I totally forgot. So here we go. Oh yes, I remember. So if your macarons, if you only have one tray to bake the macarons, like right now I only have one tray to bake them in this little oven, 
you need to wait for the tray to cool down completely before you put the macarons in there and try to bake them again. That is for sure going to crack your macarons if you don't wait for the tray to cool down. And now we got this. Let's try to bake them. I would still, they're so shiny and beautiful. Thank you, Nicole. Um, thank you so much. What temperature would you like the thermometer to read? So it depends. On my big oven, I'm trying to have the temperature read about 300 to 310. Before I used to do 325. That's way too much for this, for this oven that I have now. So I can't do that high temperature anymore. And for the little one, I'm trying to do like 280, something like that. And I'll show you the, the thermometers in the big oven. So this, I would probably let them rest a little bit longer, but for the sake of our life, I'm just gonna start baking them so you have a chance to see them, to see them baked. And so I can show you about this oven over here. So here we go. We have here the, I have three thermometers. I don't know if you can see, well, can you see it? I have three thermometers. One is over here on the side. One is over here on this side and one is on the middle all the way over there. The ones in the front, believe it or not, tell a hotter temperature than the temperature in the middle. Over here in the front, the temperature is about 315. In this one, it's even hotter than 315. I can't really see. And in the back is, in the middle one, is almost 300. And my oven is set to 310. So now I'm going to put my little macarons in there. Let's see. And I'm also going to set a six minute timer. I often have to rotate the trays for sure with this oven. So let's put six minutes here. Did you have any more questions? I feel like I missed a lot of questions. Do you projector? No, I don't use a projector. Um, I do have this little tool that I got for, cause I wanted to do some decorations for the macarons. So I got this little, it's, it was like five bucks. It, it's like a, a acrylic screen that you can put on a little pedestal and it, it kind of projects the image, but they have like much nicer, way expensive um, projectors out there. Your rack's so cute. Normally you see big, big, it's big and tall. Yeah, it's a mini rack. I got it on, on Amazon. <laughs> I baked my macarons last time and didn't rise at all. It turned out to be like a meringue cookie. Hard outside, chewy inside, really sweet. Didn't taste like macarons, but I kind of like it. I don't know why. Okay. <laughs> if you have pictures, just send it to me. Maybe we can talk it out. Try to see if we can figure out what happens. Just took my first batch out of my convection oven and they're beautiful. Hopefully they're not hollow. Yay! Do you use a scale to measure the ingredients? Yes, for sure. Does your air bake pan pop in the back? Yes, yes. My, my air bake did do that. My air bake trays, they are like kind of crooked, I feel like. How long did it take to bake the macarons in the convection oven? So we had 21 minutes first and then I put another three minutes, right? So it was a total of 24 minutes. I think some of the, the girls had said I had them in there for 21 minutes. So it took about 24 minutes to bake them. In the big oven, I think it takes about 20 minutes. Okay, here we have the macarons. I feel like resting really helps with this issues, with this feet issues. This one is the one we did not rest. Resting the macarons, to me, in my opinion, the ones that I do rest and bake on the same oven come out with the feet not doing that as much. But I don't, I don't mind it. I really don't mind it. I like the Swiss, the Swiss feet tend to be a little bit smaller and that's okay to me. Um, so, here we go. Baked. Baked macarons. Um, so now let me take them out here so we can 
It's a fine if the peaks bend a little bit. A little bit, yes. They shouldn't be bending down to the, to, like bending down. They can be bending like this a little bit. You see what I'm, see what I'm saying? Like a, a little bird's beak. Not the bird's beak consistency, that's something else. But it does look like a little, little bird beak at the top there. The color stays so wonderfully for purple. Thank you, Nicole. And thank you so much for staying here. And thank you, everybody, for staying here. Um, let's decorate those macarons over here while the other ones while the other ones are baking. And then we'll end this. I know, guys, thank you so much for staying so long here with me. I definitely... Let's see what the temperature is in the... I don't think I had time to measure. Because the temperature in the small oven is still saying that it's 230. So it's definitely... It's definitely wrong. Um, didn't get there yet, the thermometer. So... If you want me to do a live again, we can definitely do another one. Tell me what you guys want to see me doing. I think somebody said they want me to do two colors or three colors. It's my favorite. I rarely ever make a batch of macarons that's just one solid color. So I would love to do that. So let's decorate this real quick. I'll show you what I'm going to decorate. I'm going to just put some sprinkles on them and they're still a little bit hot and I'm trying to remove them from the tray, which you shouldn't do, but it's coming out fine vegan yes oh my gosh i gotta try to do vegan here first in this new kitchen this new climate i haven't tried yet i think i'm a little bit scared vegan macarons are they are not i think they're harder than egg macarons maybe because i bake them less and i'm more used to baking egg macarons but they're definitely you know you gotta learn it's a whole new Whole new game now let's quickly just um decorate this the ones in the oven are rising nicely i'll rotate them with you guys it was 1 30 in the morning and i'm here watching you make my goals i'm tired but i still don't want to miss this thank you thank you so much i said that alisa thank you that is so very 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 sweet Okay, so let's just put this macarons over here. I like to match them before I start, you know, filling them, of course. Um, so let's just do a quick filling and um, decorating them. Try to match the macarons. Is it good? Okay. This is, this is better. All right. So for the decoration, the decoration of the macarons, I have a little, my little decorating station here. So I'm just gonna melt some white chocolate chips in the microwave. Let's go over here. You and Nicole are amazing, love you both. I agree, Nicole, you really are. Guys, if you do, if you wanna learn about macarons, go follow Nicole. There's so many amazing creators, macaron teachers out there. If you go on my Instagram, I'm always mentioning them. Learn from them because they might have a tip that works for them that might work for you that I don't use. It's always good to learn from different people so you can get like the best information and, you know, as much information as you can and apply whatever really works for you. So I'm going to rotate this macarons. Let me get my little towel. Here you go. I'm going to rotate them. They're baking nicely. You can see that. The feet are probably higher than, they're probably gonna come out higher than the other ones. I will show you later if we don't have time to finish baking this on the live. I'll definitely post on my Instagram. I'm gonna put another um, 12 minutes because it's definitely gonna take 12 minutes or more. Now let's do the decoration real quick. So where my ch my white chocolate? I'm gonna melt it in the microwave. Um, and then we're going to put it in this little um, piping bag. Fit it with a little tiny, tiny little tip. And I have a buttercream, it's just a vanilla buttercream I made earlier. 
Oh. I don't want to burn the chocolate. I, lo I love drizzling chocolate over macarons or dipping macarons in chocolate. It's my favorite. It's just such an easy way to decorate the macarons. And I'm using this sprinkles. Kind of goes with the color, right? So I was hoping to get a color more like the purple sprinkles are, but I would have had to add more food color. All right, so here we have our melted chocolate. It's not melted fully yet. It's Calibo. I love Calibo, it's my favorite chocolate in the whole world. Do you use oven with a fan? The little, the little oven, yes, has a fan. The big oven does not have a fan. So, but the little oven that does have a fan is really not the same thing as like a big convection oven. It is different. Okay, so here we have my chocolate. I'm going to put it on the piping bag so it can drizzle on top of the macarons. On my bag ties. In the big convection oven, how long and what temperature I bake. I'm baking at 310, the oven has different temperatures and the front is almost 310 I think and then the back it was like almost 300 or 300 uh, for how long it will be about 20 minutes maybe a little bit over 20 minutes um, so let's decorate them okay so I'm just gonna get the chocolate and drizzle my favorite part. And I'll, I'll do this one. If Lena, Lena, if you're still there, Lena's the one who, she showed me a picture of this design one time. She said, you should make this design, the little swirls on top. And I'm like, I really should. And then I made my hazelnut macarons that had the design. So here are my sprinkles. Yay. I'm just gonna add a few sprinkles to the chocolate while it's still wet. Just fun. Sprinkles. So fun. Those are from, what is it? Fancy sprinkles. They have some really nice sprinkles. They have a really cute um, Halloween line. Super, super cute. Okay, so here we have. Can you see? They're so cute. <laughs> now, I don't know, they're so like slightly warm. I don't want to put my buttercream in them. In them. Listen, you, sh you at home should always, always let the macarons cool down before. But for the sake of not keeping you guys here all day, the tip that I'm using is a 4B. I'll show you better here this one came out a little bit weird let's see can you see really nicely all right let's do this i love this tip the buttercream is a little bit soft it's been hot in the kitchen but it's still good I love the tip, this tip, 4B, super pretty. 6B for filling macarons, I also love it. Super pretty as well. There you go. There we have our macarons. All right, guys, the, the macarons in the oven are not done baking. They won't be done baking for a little while. And, and um, I'm gonna end the live now. But I will put, I can post pictures of this. I'll try to make some fun reels with the ones that I have left to put on Instagram. Um, thank you so much for watching. They're so cute. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, if you had a fan in the big oven, would you use it? I would experiment with it for sure. Yes. 
a fan in the oven can definitely help keep the temperature regulated. So thank you everyone for watching. Let's do it again for sure. Lina, thank you. Thank you so much. Everybody for baking with me. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate it. This was awesome. I was like so nervous before, but now I'm like pumped. I just want to do another one. <laughs> yes, me too. I'm very much looking forward to the next one. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye.